again. Picture a nice day in the late Cretaceous about 65 million years ago. In one area, a friendly T-Rex is out looking for food. Somewhere else, a herd of duckbill dinosaurs are socializing around a watering hole. Nearby, a group of Triceratops are spending some quality time together. Unknown to them, a large asteroid, 10 kilometers in diameter, is zoning in on a location on the Yucatan Peninsula, moving at a velocity of 50,000 miles per hour. As the asteroid begins to enter Earth's atmosphere, the dinosaurs start to run in fear, but it is no use. The impact of the asteroid has a strength of 300 million nuclear bombs, immediately exterminating anything within the immediate distance. Within a week, a dust and debris cloud will be stretching out in all directions from the impact site, at a size of 4,000 kilometers. As the second week begins, dust and soot begin to travel around the world, creating worldwide effects. By four weeks after the event, a large dust cloud will have engulfed the planet, causing permanent night for months. This dust cloud will lead to a global winter lasting for three years. As the years go on, more and more species continue to die off until 80% of species on Earth are wiped out. Ten years following the event, a large crater is left in the Yucatan Peninsula with a di diameter of 180 kilometers. It will take 65 million years for a father and son team of scientists to find this crater and tell this story. Alvarez's hypothesis posits that dinosaurs went extinct because of a meteor impact. This hypothesis is named after father and son Louis and Walter Alvarez. Louis Alvarez was a Nobel Prize winning physicist and his son Walter was a geologist. <laughs> So he said, well, as a matter of fact, we have a job that I think just fits you. Because normally when you develop a new weapon, like a new bomb or anything of that sort, new rifle shell, you take it out to Aberdeen test testing grounds and you test it and test yeah. it. And My father got busy and the things that physicists love to do, I would hate this, but he loved it, was to make a, um, a special iridium coincidence counter that made it possible to measure lots of re samples real fast. You know? he Together, Louis and Walter came up with the Alvarez hypothesis and were the first to discover the KT boundary on a trip to Italy. A lot of evidence needed to be found to prove the Alvarez hypothesis. They needed to find a crater of the right size and age, worldwide boundary clay at the KT boundary, they had to find worldwide effects, they needed evidence of an impact such as shocked cores and spherules, and to prove that iridium is rare on Earth's surface and the iridium at the KT boundary is caused by an impact, not by the environment. Louis and Walter were able to identify the KT boundary in Italy. The boundary contained a clearly visible layer of clay as would be expected with an impact. This clay layer can be found all over the world. This clay layer at the KT boundary contained 30 times more iridium than is typically found on Earth's crust. As you can see on this graph where depth is shown on the y-axis and amount of iridium is shown on the x-axis, there is a major spike in iridium levels at the KT boundary. This is evidence for an impact because meteors are known to contain a lot of iridium. There is also evidence of worldwide effects from the impact. Charcoal and soot have been found as evidence for massive forest fires around the world. These fires were caused by extremely hot impact debris that rained down around the world. A worldwide boundary clay is also evidence of worldwide effects, as well as worldwide evidence of extinction. Lastly, evidence for the Alvarez hypothesis is the Chicxulub crater found at the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico. Is such a thing even possible? Yes, it is. The Chicxulub crater is now thought to be the remains of the impact that killed the dinosaurs. Cratering is common on Earth and in the solar system. Fewer craters remain on Earth today because of erosion and weathering. Craters can be broken into two different classes, simple and complex. 
Simple craters have bowl-shaped depressions and are typically crater-formed structures on the moon with rim diameters of less than about 15 kilometers. Complex craters occur on the moon for those that are greater than 15 kilometers in diameter. These have shallow, relatively flat floors, central uplifts, slump blocks, and terraces on the inner wall of crater rim. In even larger craters, such as 20 to 175 kilometer diameters on the moon, the central uplift is typically a single peak or a small group of peaks. Even larger, such as greater than 175 kilometer diameter on the moon, have complex ring-shaped uplifts. When larger than 300 kilometers, these are termed impact basins and not craters. The material ejected from a crater is deposited mainly in the area surrounding the crater. Closer to the crater, the material forms a thick, continuous layer, but at larger distances, ejected wheat can discontinuous clumps of material. Some of this material ejected is large enough to create a new crater when it impacts. These are termed secondary craters and typically occur as lines of craters pointing back to the original crater. Material below the surface of the crater is disrupted by the shock of the impact event. Near the surface is a layer of breccia, which is coarse angular fragments of broken up boulder rocks. Rocks at deeper depths remain in place but are highly fractured by the impact. The amount of fracturing decreases as the depth below the surface increases. The energy of impact typically causes some material to melt. In small craters, the impact melt occurs as blobs of material in the breccia layer. In larger craters, the impact melt may occur as sheets of material. The Chicxulub of crater itself is a buried 180 kilometer diameter crater on the Yucatan Peninsula that is the impact crater from the KT event. The size and shape are revealed by magnetic and gravity field anomalies and oil wells drilled in and near the structure. The stratigraphy of the crater includes a sequence of andesitic igneous rocks and glass interbedded with and overlain by brushes that contain evidence of shock metamorphism. Andesitic rocks that have chemical and isotopic compositions similar to those of tektites found in the KT ejecta. There's a 90 meter thick KT boundary brescia that also contains evidence of shock metamorphism, which is present at 50 kilometers outside the crater's edge. The brescia probably represents the crater's ejecta blanket. The KT boundary age is indicated for the age of the crater. The crater is in a thick carbonate sequence, so shock produced CO2 from the impact may have caused a severe greenhouse warming. Seismic data collected across the offshore portion of the impact crater determined that the diameter of the transient cavity is around 100 kilometers. This is critical for constraining impact-related effects on the Cretaceous environment. Previous estimates of the cavity diameter spin an order of magnitude in impact energy. Offshore seismic data indicate that the Chicxulub crater has a multi-ring basin morphology.